What if you knew about a crime committed against a child and did nothing to report it? Would your silence be as harmful as the act itself? Let's take a trip to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where a local state president found himself at the heart of a chilling controversy. This individual, a mandated reporter under Pennsylvania law, allegedly knew about a case of child sexual abuse since October 2020, yet failed to raise the alarm. This isn't just a moral failing or a breach of trust. In Pennsylvania, it's a crime. Failure to report such a heinous act is considered a third-degree felony. And let's not mince words here, the potential sentence for this is as severe as it should be, up to seven years in prison. It's a stark reminder that silence can carry a weight as heavy as the crime itself. It's a reminder that those in positions of power and trust have a responsibility that goes beyond their immediate circle. The silence of those who should protect the vulnerable often turns deafening, doesn't it? Reporting child abuse, as straightforward as it may seem, often becomes a complex issue, doesn't it? The obligation to report, known as mandated reporting, can have unintended consequences, particularly on marginalized communities. There are valid concerns about the potential for false accusations and the harm that can come from reporting instances of neglect. However, let's not lose sight of the fact that child sexual abuse is a heinous act that inflicts direct harm on the most vulnerable among us. Despite the complications, the priority should always be to protect children from sexual abuse. This isn't about pointing fingers or causing unnecessary harm. It's about safeguarding the innocent. It's about ensuring that those who cannot defend themselves have someone else to stand up for them. Mandated reporting is more than a legal obligation. It's a moral one. It's about putting the welfare of children above all else, even when the truth is uncomfortable or inconvenient. Protecting the innocent should never be a question of convenience, should it? Why would a church resist reporting child sexual abuse, especially when it holds the power to change the narrative? It's a question that rests heavily on the minds of many. As a moral compass for the community, one might assume that the church's default mindset would be to abide by mandated reporting statutes. Yet resistance persists. Could this resistance be connected to the clergy penitent privilege, the sacred vow of confidentiality between a clergy member and a penitent? Perhaps, but here's a thought. What if the church could declare confessions of child abuse as non-confidential under church policy? This isn't about betraying confidences. This is about protecting the most vulnerable among us. It's time for a shift in mindset. It's time to consider whether the sanctity of confession should ever overshadow the safety of a child. Could the sanctity of confession be more important than the safety of a child? It's a question that demands careful consideration and more importantly, action. Could compliance with mandated reporting requirements become a beacon of hope for the victims? Imagine a world where the well-being of the vulnerable is prioritized, where silence is replaced with actions that safeguard the innocent. Compliance with mandated reporting is more than just adhering to legal requirements. It's about taking a moral stand, choosing to prioritize the safety and protection of the most defenseless among us. It's about creating an environment where child abuse victims are not further victimized by silence, but are given a voice through the actions of those in positions of authority. The benefits of such compliance are multifold. For the victims, it means justice and the chance for healing. For church leaders, it's an opportunity to demonstrate moral leadership, to show that the church is a place of safety and care. And for the church itself, it's a chance to restore trust to show that it values and protects all its members, especially the most vulnerable. In the end, the decision to comply is not just a legal matter, but a moral one. It's about choosing to do the right thing, even when it's difficult. It's about recognizing that the safety and well-being of our children are paramount. When the law and morality converge, shouldn't we take the path that protects the most vulnerable among us?